Previously on Inside the Super Draft. That's a unique quality, and, and, and those guys are, are rare to find, especially at a young age like that. Then you've got Nagby, and you can't help but love the way that he plays. It's going to be exciting for them having the top two picks, and they're, they're going to have some pretty good offers. I think that the three teams in the Northwest will be a great rivalry. We want to win the Cascadia Cup between these three teams, and I'm sure they want to do the same. We want to make sure we make an impact right away, and, and some of these guys will have a, a direct impact in that. The 2011 MLS Player Combine kicked off on January 8th in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Staff from all 18 teams packed the bleachers to get a look at the talent up for grabs in the ensuing Super Draft. So we went through um, yesterday's games, went through each team. Um, we kind of like rank the players positionally. We'll take another look tomorrow and then we'll have another meeting and, and kind of go through the same process of looking at each individual and you know how they would fit into our team. Looking at our current roster and what we saw yesterday, um, you know there's a few few positions we think you know there's a handful of center backs out there who perform pretty well. I thought AJ Soros looked pretty good, uh, really athletic. Annie Baba uh, was also a guy who's who looks like he could make the jump. Um, uh, central midfielders as well. I thought um, Kasky was pretty good, um, and he was a guy who we hadn't seen much of, but I thought he, uh, he changed the game for that team. And then the, of the foreign players, I thought all of them were technically good. Uh, Victor uh, Stupinan, I thought he was, he was good. He made good runs, and, and he worked hard, and he's a guy you could see he's played at a higher level. We need to look at our roster. We need to see these guys play a couple more times, and. Um, but I think it, overall it was a pretty good first day. Seen a lot of good play today um, from the four teams and um, we'll go back as a staff and take our notes and have a look at them and have a little chat. I think always the day two is, is a good leveller and then you start to see the, the real good players coming to the front. I think there's a lot of talent out there. Um, after seeing the U20s as well yesterday, Thomas Wrong and the US national team staff are, you know, doing a good job there and I think the future is bright for, for American national team soccer as well. Obviously Perry Kitchen we've seen play yesterday for U20s. Um, we've seen um, Darlington Nagby a few times playing for Akron. Um, Kofi Sakori, who, who I do like, has massive potential. I dare say if I had number one, two, three and four, I could um, definitely build a, a really, really good, good team and um, for Portland in 2011. We have just uh, finished off the, la the last game here now and now we are going, going to go back to the hotel and uh, sit down because the staff we have here is quite massive and we will now sit down and uh, finalise and get together and see what we have on the block. I felt the, the, the beginning of the combine was, uh, the first game was quite average. I felt the games have as the combine went on has got better and better. Yeah, the combine's always a productive thing for us because uh, uh, I think over three days, sort of, uh, uh, every player floats and rises to their level or falls to their level. Well, these combines are always very interesting, you know, uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of talent here. There's always some players that you see and you go, man, I wish I was in position to pick that guy because he's, he's special. For us, the number two pick is, um, you know, it, there's only a, a handful of guys that you would take at that pick, so we are very fortunate. No, it would be fantastic if we could get uh, a few uh, talents uh, from the uh, from the draft. Whatever happens, Vancouver are going to get a good player. Portland are going to get a very good player. So you know whether it be a Perry Kitchen, a Darlington Nagby, a Kofi Sakori, they're all very good players in their respective positions. So we we don't have a problem to get either either one of these guys. As the combine came to a close, the teams began to target certain positional needs, some of which could be filled on draft day. There are some strikers here. We have been looking for strikers. And, and our concentration will definitely be a bit on that. Goalkeeper is a position that sometimes a kid gets identified early uh, on the youth team, but there's other guys that pass him by later because they're physically mature or they're, or they're hungrier because they haven't gotten that opportunity. So we 
we're very cognizant of not getting locked into uh, only looking at the guy who's right now on top of the heat. Everybody brings something different. There's the experience for sure that McMath brings, having been on the under 20s, and you know you had a had a really big, large goalkeeper in in Willis, and then you had uh, a short, quick, reactionary goalkeeper in Josh Ford. Uh, you know, you know Meredith is a little in between there. Preparing for numerous possibilities on draft day, the teams looked beyond the cream of the crop to evaluate the entire draft pool. Overall, you know, I think the talent, uh, you know, continues to be reasonably solid. Everybody always says it's down, uh, but I think it, it works out pretty well. There are players that have, uh, that I felt didn't start off very well, but, uh, but uh, came very strongly uh, later in the combine, and definitely players that have uh, interested me. There's some impact guys. Uh, at, at the top part of the combine for sure. Uh, but then I think you get to a point where really between 10 and say 30, there's not maybe a heck of a lot of difference. Internally, we have had some, uh, some meetings to try to find out uh, what we think will be available as our, our second pick. We've also got two early picks in the second round. Um, so for us, we know the core group of guys that we would take as a, as a number two pick, so if, if Vancouver pick, Option A, we just go to your option B type of thing. The other thing that becomes exciting is, is can you find that diamond in a rough in the third round? Can we dig up another Mike Facito who we picked in the fourth round? Uh, Jeff Park, who's on our team now, was, was the player who was picked last in the draft. You know, finding that diamond in a rough is, is a lot of fun too. Hey, I think this guy might have something special. That's where you've got to do your homework and say, can we get a, you know, a steal and there, someone that we can add to the roster that can come through a little bit later. I don't think that there are many players in the combine though that, uh, that could go in and, and uh, be starters in, in the MLS teams. You know, I, I think most of this talent here need, need some time to adjust to, to the league. With just hours to go until draft day, all kinds of opportunities beckon, giving each team plenty to think about. Obviously for us now, we've got to look at, uh, at what the different opportunities are. And uh, uh, so if, you know, if at 11 there's a player on the board that we really covet and interest, we'll, we'll certainly hold on to that pick and take it. But if that guy isn't there, you know, there's probably six or seven guys that we would throw in that category. If that guy isn't there, you know, we might be very willing to trade that for some allocation money uh, or allocation money in a lower pick or something like that, some combination thereof. Tom has been very busy on the phone and uh, there are a lot of things that have come up during the time we've been here. So um, we will definitely have a look into that and, and, and see how that turns out. Always the night before the draft is, uh, is probably a great sociological study for a college class. Uh, you know, all the interaction and, you know, the little huddles that go on. One team's huddled here, another team's huddled there. They, they send out their little uh, advanced guys to see what they're thinking and he comes back to the group and, and you sort of go through the group thing. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting evening. We have tried to, as much as we can, to, to prepare for everything. And I, I think we have a quite good overview. And, and uh, I'm, I'm quite sure that, uh, that we are well prepared for the draft and, and uh, have, uh, have seen it from uh, almost all angles. So, so uh, hopefully we will, be, we will be well prepared for that. On the next episode of Inside the Super Draft, it's an historic start for the league's two newest expansion sides. For while the Sounders wait and see if one of their top choices will fall. I think there's two more picks, maybe three, and then surprises start happening. Draft day kicks off when Inside the Super Draft moves on to Baltimore.